welcome to new science app can you please introduce yourself and briefly describe uh, your experience related to ivf hi this is mohammad nisar i am a chief embryologist my career in embryology more than 25 years what is embryologist job doctor stimulate the uh, stimulate the patient we collect the eggs and collect the sperm and we process that is uh, called embryology so wh uh, what is ivf and how does it works in vitro fertilization in this process we collect eggs from the woman sperm from the husband and fertilize them outside once the embryos developed we transfer into the uterine cavity followed by pregnancy this is called ivf and test tube baby basically what are the common reasons uh, why individual or couples opt for this treatment the main reasons for the ivf procedure are infertility is due to poor lifestyle poor lifestyle come because of poor lifestyle the obesity obesity will lead to hypertension and diabetes and endometriosis tubal blockage so on that is the reason they will not able to conceive they fall into infertility for men it is also seven parameter the 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 men usually have a poor lifestyle also because of that poor lifestyle their semen quality is deteriorating sometime no sperm oligospermia asthenospermia uh, teratosospermia means low sperm count low motility low morphology that is the uh, cause of again infertility in men sometime in genetics sometime uh, family history that is that lead to uh, couple fall into infertility uh, how do you determine if someone is suitable candidate for uh, this treatment when the patient comes to our clinic the clinician will evaluate they the we have a female cl clinicians they evaluate whether this is this patient is obese they will investigate hormonal imbalancement they investigate all the parameter then they will come to the conclusion what type of infertility what type of problem they are facing according to that problem they the doctor will suggest and when it comes to sometime the problem of when we give uh, medication the patient will become pregnant sometime they need small procedure like artificial insemination iui with that um, it is a less expensive and this is a uh, less complicated so this this iui procedure will also help the patient to become pregnant when the patients will have a poor ovarian reserve less uh, low amh and so on then they with advanced age they need ivf icsi treatment what is different between ivf and icsi what is ivf ivf is in vitro fertilization we collect eggs from the woman sperm from the husband we process when the embryos grows when em embryo development takes place and we transfer the embryos to the woman womb followed by the once implantation occurs the pregnancy hcg secretion will start and the pregnancy will start so that is called ivf I, uh, ivf we do ivf because um, uh, unexplained infertility and uh, tubal factor and sometime it's hormone so in vitro fertilization is a common process in embryology what is icsi icsi is intracytoplasmic sperm injection this revolutionary technique for male infertility it is just like vardhan i mean this is a revolutionary technique when the patient when the uh, men has a, we uh, for ivf we need 15 million sperm count and good motility and morphology for male infertility we need few number of sperm what we we process the sperm and we do intracytoplasmic sperm injection we collect the eggs from the woman and we inject the eggs 
uh, we inject the sperm directly into the oocyte then followed by pregnancy because in in normal condition we need cert certain number of uh, uh, millions of sperm to reach the egg and fertilize in normal condition for ivf we collect the eggs and we we inseminate uh, inseminate the sperm we need some millions of sperm few millions of sperm to to uh, uh, opt for uh, fertilization in ICSI we need few number of sperm to fertilize and we to overcome the fertilization and uh, once the embryo embryo development takes place we either we freeze the embryos for a future trials and or we transfer the embryos what happens during the fertilization process in the laboratory once we collect the eggs from the woman we assess the oocytes we collect the sperm and do uh, the fertilization process by ivf or icsi once we start the process it has to uh, perform fully under uh, temperature we have to maintain temperature we have to maintain ph we we have a special incubator where co2 how the body is uh, controls the uh, oocyte and embryos same condition we apply into the the our lab we have a uh, incubators we have a uh, workstation we have a uh, uh, as a fully aseptic technique and uh, the lab lab condition where we keep the embryos and we once the embryo development starts from pronucleus to the two cell eight cell and um, morula and blastocysts once we assess uh, we we followed we check in between and we follow the uh, how the prognosis taking place accordingly we we inform the doctor to for the transfer uh, or uh, the surplus surplus embryos will go for freezing what is the role of genetic testing and screening in ivf procedure when the couple comes here uh, in any fertility center they the we have a uh, counselor uh, to evaluate their mental condition we we counsel the patient for their success we ex explain them uh, what is the procedure they are going to have what is what is the um, drawback some if there is uh, issues during the procedure we explain to the to the patient and uh, this will make the patient understand whole process how process is taking place also we have a uh, genetic counselor who uh, evaluate the patient their history their uh, family history if they have a family history of uh, any anomalies or fam family any any patient who is having their parents or grandparents or down syndrome or klinefelter syndrome or any uh, any uh, genetic disorders we we inquire about the patient all the information we if there is a required uh, we we process and we explain to the uh, fully uh, to the patient about the genetic the genetic counseling and what are the consequences or what, if there is anything required we will screen them and until we uh, make sure everything is perfect we we will not transfer the embryos IVF can be expensive what should individual consider when budgeting for IVF treatment as an embryologist lab in the IVF lab we have a very advanced equipments we have integrated system we have a time lapse system we we have a voc meters to to volatile organic compounds we can check everything we have a tem the whole environment we have we can uh, we can assess how good quality of air how how temperature is maintaining how vocs are there we have we can we can check everything these are so advanced and we have a, a tagging system also we can uh, without any embryo mix up we can use technology also we have in genetic level lot of uh, lot of uh, development has taken place for congenital anomalies let's say if a patient or if a couple are having a previous history of or baby with down syndrome or or any genetic anomalies 
before we can we can detect we ha we have a procedure pgd pgt pre implantation genetic screening we have a uh, pgd pre implant pre implantation genetic diagnosis where you can screen the embryos we can take the some cells in from that uh, biopsy blastocyst or day 3 embryos we can, uh, we can take some cells and we can screen that uh, embryo any abnormality this patient is in uh, this the baby which is about to have are same inherited uh, they, they will free from the disease or not we can screen so uh, in genetic level we have lot of advance we can screen before before transferring the embryos the normal embryos can be transferred sir what is art bank now icmr icmr has regulated the system of giving license every ivf center should have license art bank or semen bank or or embryo bank or oocyte bank so where you can you can you can collect the eggs and store and uh, by uh, we have a regulation by icmr guidelines so accordingly we can follow and we can have a guidelines and if we need uh, oocytes from the uh, for any patient we can we can get from the this uh, art banks